Here we have a V15 Detect. I'm going to show you how to open up and disassemble it. So this is the V15 Detect. First, you need to remove the battery. So the difference in this one, the battery has a button. Unlike the V11 and V10. So press the button to remove the battery. Next, we need to remove the filter. This filter is the same filter with your V11. So to remove the bin, we push the bin forward. It stops here. We need to press the red button to take it out. There's a little clip here that stops. That's why you have to press the red button. Remember, this clip actually can break. And it's common for the V11 and V10 to have this. So the V15 will have the same issue. Dyson doesn't sell replacements for this. So if you need another <coughs> slider, you won't get one. I bought my replacement slider on eBay secondhand. Apparently some people can buy it on Amazon. And here I have a V11. So I'm just showing the parts of V15 actually fit in V11. So the bin and the filter are the same. So next, we're going to remove the two rubber rings, the inner and the outer one. For the outer one, we need to get like a screwdriver so we can um, pry it out. It's recommended that you do not remove the inner ring unless you need to because you will not be able to put it back in properly. So for the outer ring, once we get it out, we can now go around the sides and it'll come off. Mine is new, so it's a bit difficult as it's a lot stiffer. So here, remember, <coughs> the flat side goes on the inside. So you just need to get it in. Once you get it in, you can stretch it out and I'll go back in properly. Next, the inner ring, you just need to lift it up and pull it out. Please note where the inner ring lines up to on the bottom. So when you put it back, you can put it back in the same line or push it down as much as it's supposed to be by default. So this is how you get out. It's pretty simple, but putting back is really a pain and extremely difficult. So it's recommended that you go around with your hands, push it down. Next, then we're going to use my prime tool to slowly go around the edges. So I can push it down. So the first thing is you need to push it down with your hand as much as you can first. Try to push it down um, a bit at a time or else um, the rubber will be uneven in some places. So now I'm trying my hardest as possible to push it down by my hand. Once I've done that, I'm going to get my prying tool to push it down further. This is extremely important because if you stuff up, you won't be able to close your bin properly and you'll find it really difficult to open your bin with the red, um, red slider or the red button and slide your bin off. So now I'm just checking the line, if my line is back to the original location. So remember to test it. So I'm just sliding back in to test it if I still can close properly. So if it's loose, you won't be able to close the lid properly or it gets wedged. And when you open it, it's not going to flip open or it's really going to be really difficult for you to take out. Next, we're going to remove the bottom ring. There's a Torque T8 screwdriver screw that you need to remove. So here's my Torque screwdriver, um, screwdriver head. Don't know if you can see that, but it says T8.
so we can remove this screw. We need to pull with the back. You won't be able to pull it if yours is new. What you're going to need is you're going to need to put prying tools in it to leverage it out. So you just need flat prying tools like this. You need to insert it in between the ring and the outer bin. The reason why is um, there's tabs on the ring that goes into grooves on the bin and that stops it from falling out. What we need to do is we need to lift that up so it can slide out easy and not get stopped by it. So I'm just inserting it here. After I insert it, I will show you guys what it might mean. So you want to insert your prime tools next to the tabs. So here you go. There's a tab here and a tab here. So I'm trying to insert my prime, prime tools close to the tabs as possible to lift them up. So when I pull on it, it doesn't get caught in the grooves. And here you go. Just to demonstrate you, here's the tabs. And on the bin, there's groove holes that the tabs go in. This locks it into place. This is why we need to use our prime tool. So to go back in, you need to put the screw, the screw hole back in first. You tilt it, and once it's tilt, you can push it in by force. And it will go in. I'm not going to push it in because if I push it in, I have to put my tabs back in or my prime tool back in. Next, we're going to remove the red ring. To remove the red ring, you need a flathead screwdriver. And there's a hole. There's a hole next to the screw hole that you use to remove this ring. Insert it in. You have to insert it in quite deep. There's a hole there. Once you insert it in, then you start prying up. Once you pry up, you'll see it clicks and it re and removes the top. Yours might be difficult to remove like mine, since mine's new, it hasn't gone through any wear and tear. So that gap aligns with the screw, where the screw goes in. Also the red ring, it has um, tabs on it too. And the plastic part has grooves, you need to align these. If you don't align them, they don't go in, um, you won't be able to close the lid properly. So you just need to look at one of them because they're all the same size. Once it goes in, they all go in properly. Next, you need to align the ring correctly towards the front or towards the uh, hole, the gap and the screw hole. You need to lift the red ring up. Once you lift the red ring up, it will go into this groove on the top. So this is why you have to lift it up. So you have to ensure the ring is in the groove. Or else when you push it down, if it's not aligned with the ring, it actually stops it from going down. This is the annoying part. So put it on top, align it correctly, lift up the red ring and lift up the plastic ring, then push it back down. This way we know that the red ring and the, the, ring and the plastic ring are aligned. Now we just need uh, put the plastic ring on the bottom and it should align correctly. Remember to pull on it to make sure it's um, stretched evenly. So just going to demonstrate you again. Put your flathead screwdriver in the hole. Don't get a big one, just get one that fits the hole. Then you can pry it up. Remember it has to go in quite deep and go in straight, don't go in diagonal. Get our red ring out, align our grooves with our, uh, our tabs with our grooves. Just one is enough. Once that is aligned, all the rest should. So put the ring on top of the housing, align the gap where you should pry and the screw hole. Once that's aligned, we need to lift up the red ring. So the groove on the red ring and the plastic ring align. 
Now, once it's aligned, we need to align the cutout on the plastic ring with the bottom. Once that is aligned, then we can push all the sides in. So you just need to get one side aligned first, and once that's aligned, you can push all the sides in. Now to put it back in, you remember you have to put the screw hole one back in first, and then push it in. It tilts in like this. Put your screw back in. If you lose your screw, it doesn't matter, as it's not going to fall out. Now we're going to remove the cyclet from the motor. So there's four screws on the back that you have to remove here, the same as the V11 and V10, and there's two screws on the rail. So this process is exactly the same, basically exactly the same as the V10 and V11, there's slight difference. And this uses the Phillips head screws, or screwdriver. Just to show you, you need a long screwdriver, you need that long, so it can go in. If you have a short screwdriver, or if you're using uh, a screwdriver like mine's previously, the connecting head is too big to insert, so you need to get a screwdriver that has a long reach, and that's thin. Once we've removed all our six screws, we can now take it out. The motor is slightly different, just to tell you. The previous motor, and the, uh, the previous motor was, um, it had to connect the horizontal. This one is vertical, so therefore you can't switch out the heads. So now, we're going to remove the bin rail. There's one. You need your T8 torque screwdriver to remove it. There's one screw holding the rail down. Even though this rail comes out, you can't actually buy the rail independently. Like I said, I, uh, someone has advised me they bought it on Amazon and it cost them 40 Australian dollars to buy it. So this is the tab that breaks. So be careful with um, when you take out your bin, don't take it out too aggressively or too strong as it will snap this piece of plastic off. So here, we need our Torque T8 screwdriver to remove the following screws. There should be four of them.
we can lift it up now. There's this rubber ring. You can remove the rubber ring by just pulling it out. The rubber ring is really stretchy. Just to show you on the rubber ring, there is this cutout or this tab. And that tab needs to align with this piece here. There's a cutout here that that rubber will align. It's actually aligned to your um, release button. When you attach attachments, the red button. Yeah, so it's uh, aligned with that hole. So when you put it in, make sure your cutouts, screw cutouts, go in where they are correctly. And uh, the center piece cutout, whatever you want to call it is, um, goes in correctly as well. So after you put it in correctly, remember to pull on it so you can uh, readjust the rubber so it's not compressed or stretched out anyway. So I'm just taking it out again for demonstration. Next, we need to remove the connector. Removing the connector is a bit difficult. As you can watch my other videos, I have a special video only to teach you how to remove the connectors. I'm going to use plastic chopsticks and they're not going to work really well. So you need to put the plastic chopsticks on the other side and hammer them through. Since it doesn't work out well, so I have to cut this, I have to change and use wooden chopsticks as the plastic chopsticks just broke. So I'm cutting the next part so you don't need to watch it. So here we go with the wooden chopsticks. So with the plastic chopsticks, they just snap. Even with wooden ones, they break as well. Just demonstrate here, my wooden chopsticks broke a few times. So what you're going to need is, you're going to need one or two chopsticks. So the idea is you need to push the connector out from the back. And you will also have to lean it on the side. The reason why it is um, they made it flush, so you can't knock it out. So good thing is I'm going to use a box to lift up my end so it gives me slack in my cable so I can knock it out. Next thing is I'm just going to leave my connector hanging off the edge. This way I can now um, knock the connector out without it hitting the table. So I'm just aligning my chopstick to one of the ends. Now one end is done, I'm going to do the other end. Normally it's actually better if you do two ends at once. As it's even, it doesn't go diagonal. It's just in these cases I ran out of chopsticks because I broke them all. And I don't have any more wooden chopsticks. Now that I've knocked it out, here's the connector, and as you can see, it comes out a bit. So therefore, that's why you can't do it on the table. For the V11 and V10, you could, but they changed it. It's probably because they watched the video and saw me knocking it out, and they weren't happy. So here, the connector comes out from the top. You can open the flap. The white cable is on the inside, where the hinge is, and the black cable, the negative, is on the outside with the uh, way the open is. Just to show you in the video, as you see here, the two sides are broken, and also there's also damage from um, me knocking it out. The two corners will break, and that's the idea. You need to break the two corners so you can push it out, or else it gets stuck inside. But even with it broken, you can push it back in since the cables will hold it from falling out. So to put it back in, remember, there's these tabs that pop out. They need to slot into here. So you push your cables in, and remember to make sure your tabs go in there and test it before you put it back in. So just give it a wiggle. Next, we're going to take it out like this. Need to remove the screws on the base. There's three of them, I believe. You need your Torque T8 screwdriver to remove these screws.
after you remove the screws, we need now to we need to take the outside mesh out. So there's so the issue is the panel. There's a square, there's inner square and the outer square. The because of the squares overlap, you um not overlap, are flush together, they don't come out. So what you have to do is you have to push it, you have to squeeze the outer mesh so it pops over the inner one in the square. So to put it back, you remember to align your screws. So here's an example again. So remember this part needs to go under the inner square. So you have to push it down. So now once that it's aligned again, I'm going to demonstrate how to remove it. So squeeze both sides, push the in, uh, inner square in. So you can take it out. When you put it in, remember to put the top part here underneath the inner square. See, by squeezing it and pushing it down, you can get the mesh to go up and the inner square to go down. We need to remove this. There's four screws holding this down. You also use your Torque T8 screwdriver to remove this as well. Removing these four screws allow you to see the sensor that Dyson has implemented to do the counting of the dust particles. So after you remove those two, I forgot, you actually can just pull this out if you want. So I'm just going to demonstrate that to you. So just take it out straight and you can put it back in. So there's actually two screws behind the sticker. So be careful when you peel this sticker, make sure it doesn't get dirty so you can recover it. So don't pull it all the way, just do like me, just do halfway or you can do left and right and leave the center attached. There is actually no purpose for you to remove this, but since I'm doing a disassembly video, I demonstrate it to you anyway. So to put it back, you just need to align the squ um, square and it goes back. Nothing special about it. Next. Here's the computer that um, reads your dust, uh, your dust particles. So there's a torque screwdriver that you have to remove as well to remove it. It is attached to the cable in front. I'm just having a look at it since this is the first time I removed it. There's a screw here that you need to remove. This is also another Torque T8 screwdriver. Removing these two screws here um, exposes you to the sensor or the device that actually counts the particles that go when it, they vac get vacuumed. I don't recommend you to remove this part or even expose the chip as it's unnecessary. But as I said before, since I'm doing a disassembly, I'm just demonstrating it. You have to remove the two connected cables to the chip or the computer that reads it. So one of them goes to the front of your vacuum and the other goes to the counter or the sensor. We're going to need your Torque T8 screwdriver to remove four screws around here. This is to remove the cyclone.
remove the four screws, we should be able to just take it off, like the V10 and V11. But this is slightly different. Due to the way they changed the connector, you cannot just pull uh, pull this out straight away. So to do so, you need to remove this connector here. But I don't have the proper tool to remove this connector, as it requires me to um, pinch or le uh, leverage all four sides at once. But I don't have that. What you can do is you can just pull off the back, and it will come off. This is slightly different from the V10 and V11 where you'll be able to remove the whole thing. So here for the Dyson V10 you can remove the foam, the inner foam and the outer foam. Please note the outer purple foam here is really thin. It's not like what it used to be like. They have changed the design. So when you put it back remember to be careful and also align the foam correctly. Please take your time doing this step. If you rip the gasket or the seal, whatever you want to call it, it will create an air leak in your vacuum, causing you to lose suction power. Next, you can remove the inside foam as well. It's black, so making it hard to see. The inside foam is also thinner, or not really thinner, or it's slightly different due to the way they changed the way the uh, design of the cyclones. So please be careful and try not to rip this. So here, here's the inner cyclone. You actually have, there's two guide rails here for you to slide in correctly. Please make sure you slide in correctly before you close it. So due to the way the connector is, it makes it difficult for you to remove the following piece. So you'll need to make a special tool to, uh, to pry all four sides at once to remove the tool or to remove the connector. Since I have not created that, I cannot remove the connector and we'll leave it like this for now. So to put it back in, we're going to guide in the rail. So you can now place the following on top. We're going to align it correctly and push it down. You might have to wiggle it a bit before you can get it in correctly. Make sure it's sealed correctly too, as in uh, sealed as in seated correctly. Next, align the screw holes to close it. Once you've done that, you can now put your four screws back. <laughs> Remember to look around to see if there are any gaps. If you push it down, there should be no gaps and it, looks, it should look like what it looked before. Put the four screws back. We have to put our sensor back. So it's better if you put the um, two cables back into the um, computer chip that reads the particles. As once you put the sensor back, the cable is a lot shorter, making it harder to put back in. Next, we want to put the sensor that reads the particles back. 
please note, um, don't remove this because um, you might lose the spring inside. There's actually a spring. So you need to put the two torque T8 screws back. After you do that, you put the chip over the top. Please note, there's actually a hole in, in the chip that allows you to um, align the chip correctly and sit it in correctly. So there's one screw hole and there's a um, thing, plastic piece of thing that points up and that aligns with the hole in the chip. Now that we've done that, we need to put out back our door. So the back, uh, the back of the door where the uh, cyclones are goes in first, and then you put the place with the seat tape on it afterwards. You put back your four torque screwdrivers or screws. Next, you need to put your two screws under the stick, uh, sticky tape or sticker. You can remove this sticker, this sticker does nothing, it's just to cover the screw holes. It's your choice if you want to remove it, but if you can, try to put it back as normal. Next, we want to put this in. They started to do this on a few vacuum cleaners. It's just a, um attachment. We want to guide it in the rail. There's a rail there too that it needs to sit in. Next, we're going to put our mesh back on. So we've put our cable inside and slide our mesh back on. Remember to align your mesh squ uh, square box with the other square, the inner square. So when you put, remember also the top part needs to be pushed underneath the inner square. That sounds a bit weird, but if you have it in front of you, you'll understand. Put your three screws back. Three screws back. When you put the top part in, remember to put your rubber back in and align the groove on the rubber with the cutout on the plastic. Remember when you put it back in, you need to stretch it out so there's no places that are compressed or stretch in your rubber. Once that's done, go around and pull on it so it can stretch out evenly and reform to the original shape. Also remember the cutout and the groove. So we want to insert our cable through the hole. How do you know which hole it is? The hole aligns, um, the hole is a lot smaller or a lot bigger. Uh, but easy way is just to look through the hole and see where the gap is. Once that line, you can push it down. Get your cables. Remember, the white one goes where the hinge is. And the black one goes where the door, um, the handle is or the door to open. Slide it in. Remember to close your door, uh, close it with the tabs aligned. Once you've done it, you can just insert it in and so tap on it to make sure it's in correctly. We put our four torque screws back in here. Torque T8 screw, you're gonna try our screws.
I'm gonna put our bin rail back in, which also is also a Torque T8 screw. Next, I'm going to show you how to remove the white motor cover. There is no point to remove this since the Dyson V11, they started to glue the circuit board underneath this in. So to remove it, you have to remove all the glue. So there's two Torx, Torx uh, T8 screws that you have to remove. After you remove that, you need a flathead screwdriver to pry two of the sides. There's plastic clips inside, and this is why you have to do it. So now that we removed the plastic clips, the, the next thing you need to do is the connector, you need to press it down. If you, if you press it down hard enough, it will slide in. I haven't pried enough yet, just going to pry it again. So you just have to push the center. You have to push the connector in with force. If you apply enough force, the white, white part will come out and the connector will slide in. So just, to, so here is to demonstrate they glued everything. So there's no point removing this as you don't have access to it unless you remove all the glue. Then just put your white piece back in. Once it's back in, remember to drag your connector out. So we can put our two T8 torque screws back in. Slide our cyclone or vacuum head with our motor. Remember, there's two rails here that need to slide in. So slide it in and compress it to see if it's fitting in properly. Mine wasn't, I have to realign it. Well, it should slide in and out easily. So you push it in to see, to ensure there's no gaps. If there's no gaps, then it means you have slide in correctly. We're going to have to put our four screws, our Phillips head screws, back into the back and two on the guide rail.
Now we slide our bin back in. We're going to align the guide rail on the bin with the guide rail before you put it in, or else it doesn't go in. Put back on our filter and our battery, and we'll test the unit. So as you see, it's working. That notification you saw on the screen was just, um, it tells me to charge my battery since the first time I took it out of the box. That's it. And thanks for watching.